In the hospital, we dip our surgical instruments into alcohol. Why? To kill bacteria. And here we are drinking this stuff, uh, a glass of wine with dinner, a six-pack of beer. Uh, well, that does wonderful things for your intestine. <laughs> and in this society nowadays, when anyone gets a runny nose or a scratchy throat, what do you do? You go to the doctor and you beg them or threaten them until they pull out their uh, prescription pad and give you a prescription for erythromycin, augmentin, Cipro, etc. These are potent drugs. Now, let me just say something about this. <clears throat> they can't tell the good bacteria from the bad bacteria, and it has huge implications these days. Remember, in any complex medical, any complex natural system, whether it's a river in the Amazon or your human body, wherever nature's doing her thing, you can't do one thing. You can't do just one thing. You think you are, but you're not. <clears throat> We're damming this river in the Amazon for flood control and power generation. That's what you think you're doing. But you're also backing up stagnant water, which increases the mosquito population, which will increase the malaria incidence, which will make you spray pesticides, which kills all beneficial insects, which will allow pathogenic insects to invade the barks of the trees, which would then die and fall into the river. You can't do one thing. In medicine, I'm giving this child an antibiotic to cure his ear infection. That's what you think you're doing, doctor, but you're also killing off beneficial bacteria down in the gut, which allows the pathogenic organisms to overgrow and invade the gut lining and injure the gut lining and allow food uh, molecules to leak out in the bloodstream and flow through tissues and set off the adverse reactions. You can't do one thing. And so they thought, well, I got a scratch. You thought, maybe I should get on some antibiotics just in case. Don't do that, okay? Unless you know it's a bacterial infection that your doctor thinks will really respond to an antibiotic, please uh, don't be asking for antibiotics. <clears throat> so here we do, uh, here we go, uh, really suppressing a whole lot of healthy organisms down in our gut. But what do you do? You select out the roughest, toughest antibiotic-resistant bacteria down there, and now you've got some bad actors. They're already down there, but now you've killed off their competition, and now what do we do? We feed them. We just add a little bit of sugar. <clears throat> Now, I'm not talking about a teaspoon of maple syrup in your tea. That's not a problem. That's using sugar as it's supposed to be used as a flavoring. Right? I'm talking about eating sugar as a food. Eating sugar as a food? Who does that? I can't imagine anybody who would want to eat sugar as a food. Can you, can you imagine eating sugar as a food? I don't have any. Who would eat sugar as a food? I can't imagine why anybody would want to eat sugar as a food. Um, we eat sugar by the food, by the metric ton, and we drink the stuff, stunning amounts. A little eight-ounce can of Coke. Coke used to come in eight-ounce cans. They're all in the Smithsonian now. Nobody drinks uh, eight-ounce cans anymore. But um, <clears throat> five and a half teaspoons of sugar in a little eight-ounce can of Coke, but a nice 20-ounce slurpy bottle, 13 teaspoons of sugar. <laughs> Americans are consuming almost a gallon a week of soft drinks, huge amount. <clears throat> and uh, since I'm not drinking any, somebody's drinking two gallons a week out there. <clears throat> this is food porn, if you've not seen it. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, so we kill off the, the good microbes down there, and we pour huge amounts of sugar down there. And can we be shocked if shortly afterwards you produce an intestine that looks like this. This is a small intestine that is overgrown with candida yeast, uh, and this is intestinal candidiasis. And um, these organisms, not nutritional yeast on your plate is dead stuff. These are live organisms that are boring into the wall of the intestine, injuring the wall of the intestine, and causing some problems. <clears throat> now, the condition we're referring to is dysbiosis. Dys means bad, biosis of life. We've created an unhealthy balance of bacteria and yeast uh, in our intestines. So what? Well, the so what is this? Here's the wall of the intestine. Here's food going by up here. Here's your bloodstream down here. The job of the intestine is to extract nutrients from your food stream and bring them into your uh, bloodstream. It does a good job at that. But there's a lot of things going by in the food stream you do not want in your bloodstream. Undigested food proteins, you don't want fragments of wheat gluten and casein or whatever you're eating down in your bloodstream. You don't want them, as these bacteria break down, you don't want their cell walls and flowing through your bloodstream. And a healthy intestinal wall will not allow this uh, penetration of these molecules uh, into the bloodstream. But you kill off the good bacteria, you throw a bunch of sugars down there, and you spawn a whole bunch of pathogenic organisms down in your gut. They're not innocent bystanders. They get into the wall of the intestine. They start injuring it. They put out acids and substances that injure the gut. 
And what you create is this. Molecular spaces open up between the, the cells and big molecules that have no business getting in your bloodstream start leaking through the, into the bloodstream, so-called leaky gut syndrome. Funny name, not funny condition, because these molecules then flow through tissues all over your body and they stir up some mischief. They can set off a nasty uh, arthritis. Uh, we see this so frequently in colitis. Uh, but a lot of folks have these, why my joints are always sore? It's probably coming from your gut. A lot of other autoimmune diseases um, have been uh, connected with this. Uh, plus, it also sets off um, uh, issues regarding uh, membranes that uh, secrete histamine. It sets off, uh, uh, it can make asthma worse, it goes through your skin, sets off hives. Uh, it affects everything throughout the body. And a lot of these diseases of unknown origin, really, is coming from stuff leaking out from the intestinal tract. So, how do you know if you have a leaky gut? It's one of the diseases du jour. Everybody's like, oh, I've got a leaky gut. Oh, I've got a leaky gut. No wonder I can't, uh, I can't uh, pay my taxes. I've got a leaky gut. No wonder. Um, <laughs> Well, it's not theoretical. You test for it. For, it's a test done through the mail. It costs 77 bucks uh, through most labs here. Uh, it's called the intestinal permeability test. And uh, <clears throat> I get a little kit um, uh, with some collection bottles. You uh, collect a baseline urine. Uh, you drink a little solution. It has two sugars in it, lactulose and mannitol. Um, <clears throat> uh, mannitol shows up in the urine. Lactulose should not show up in the urine. It's an insoluble sugar. Uh, it's uh, not uh, absorbable, non absorbable sugar. And so if any lactulose shows up, you've got a leaky gut. Uh, here is the test results from a fellow who's got it. Uh, here's the amount of lactulose that was recovered. You see the normal is all the way over on the left. There should be none, or they'll, they'll give you 1.5%. Um, they'll, they'll give you that. Uh, he had 3% of the lactulose that he drank showed up in his urine. The person's got a leaky gut. Okay, so this is how it's done. Any question, have your uh, practitioner order intestinal permeability test. So what do you do if you have it? Oh, the rest of my life my gut is leaky. Nah, the intestine is constantly renewing itself. You're constantly growing a new intestinal lining just the way you're constantly growing new skin. And then the basal layers work their way up to the surface. Same thing happens in the intestine. It's constantly renewing itself. You grow a new intestinal lining every few weeks. So that said, what do you do? First of all, stop hurting your intestinal lining. Stop drinking alcohol. Stop pouring the sugar down there. Stop uh, taking antibiotics. Stop setting up the conditions that cause the, the dysbiosis in the first place. Then, if you've got symptoms, certainly yank out stuff that you don't want flowing through your bloodstream in the meantime. Yank out the dairy and the wheat, probably good ideas anyway. And then you want to repair the barrier function. And it's going to repair itself anyway if you let it heal, but you can speed it along with three supplements you get at the health food store. One is a, um, is a bioflavonoid called quercetin. It, it tightens up the, 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 the uh, junctions between the cells. I have my folks take um, 500 to 1,000 milligrams twice a day, six weeks. That's, that's a few gut cycle, few linings of, few cycles of gut lining coming in. Uh, there's an amino acid called glutamine that uh, feeds the uh, intestinal cells, so I have them get on some glutamine uh, twice a day. Again, 1,000 milligrams. Uh, and again, just for six weeks. It's not forever and ever and ever, just, just uh, until the thing heals itself. And then I want to reestablish a normal population of healthy bacteria bacteria and down in the gut. And so here's where probiotics come in. Pro means for life. And these are beneficial bacteria in yeast, plus some nutrients to help them grow and get a foothold if they don't have feet, a tentacle hold, whatever they hold up.